Hi there, you are listening to Adept English, and this is a Listen and Learn podcast. My name is Hilary, and I created this Listen and Learn method to help you speak English fluently. It's much more enjoyable if you learn English in the way that your brain naturally wants to learn. I live in the United Kingdom. I'm a native English speaker, and I love helping the 100,000 students who listen to us every month. Every week, we give you two English lessons in the form of podcasts. So listen to Adept English. You'll be on your way to speaking fluent English in no time. Hi, and welcome to this latest podcast from Adept English. If you're learning English, speaking is important. But your English will improve, first of all, by listening to spoken English material. You have to understand well before you can speak with any fluency and improve your spoken English. One of the questions we're asked a lot is about how to understand British accents. Accent is spelt A-C-C-E-N-T. An accent means how you speak, the way that you say your words. And this is, of course, influenced by the place that you come from. An accent is noticeable when it's different from the more usual way of saying words, different from the standard pronunciation, or perhaps when it's different to our own accent. An accent is very much part of the English we speak. So it's likely, as an English language learner, that when you speak English, you'll have an accent from the country that you're from. So, if you're from France, you'll speak English with a French accent. If you're from Brazil, you'll speak English with a Brazilian accent, etc. And even if English is your first language, if you're from Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, and you're somewhere else in the world, people will often know within the first few words which country you're from, because your accent is still distinctive. True of people from the UK, of course, as well. Within the UK, there are also lots of accents. These accents are known as regional accents because they come from a particular region of the UK. Accent is part of our identity. But there are regional accents within the UK that can be so strong, it makes it difficult for someone learning English to understand them. So it's a good idea to do some practice understanding British accents. If you listen to Adept English regularly, you'll perhaps be familiar with the podcast number 196, which is one of our most listened to podcasts. In this podcast, have a listen to it if you haven't already. I use an example of a strong Scottish accent to show how difficult it can be to understand. And then I help you understand the accent, understand the words. If you have listened to this one, it's got a man standing in a river fishing in it. So how about today we do some more British accent practice? And the accent I'm going to look at today is the South Wales accent. Or more specifically, this accent is from South West Wales. There's some variation across even such a small area as South Wales. And if you have an ear for British accents, you might be able to tell the difference between some of them. I lived in South Wales for four years and I can tell the difference between a Valleys accent and a West Wales accent. But they do all sound similar. So this one is a good example of a South Wales accent. We say a Welsh accent or a Southern Welsh accent or a South Wales accent, but for some reason we probably wouldn't say a South Welsh accent. So the man in this video is a British MP. That's a member of the British Parliament and he's called Jonathan Edwards. He's the Member of Parliament for Carmarthen East and Dinever. This MP was born in Carmarthen in West Wales so that his accent is local to the area that he serves as an MP. Now that second place name there, Dinever, a lot of people in the UK wouldn't know how to pronounce that Welsh place name. D-I-N-E-F-W-R. So Dinever. I'm hoping I've got that right. So here is the YouTube clip for you to watch and listen to. 
and his words are included in the transcript. See if you can understand what he's saying the first time through without the transcript, without the written words. And then if you don't understand it, don't worry, I will go through it and make it easier for you to understand. Point of order, Mr Jonathan Edwards. Dear Colonel Ryan, Mr Speaker, I'm extremely grateful to you for uh, accepting this point of order. Uh, during the debate on the second reading of the Finance Bill yesterday, it was brought to my attention that a fellow member of this House, rather than engaging with the substance of the issue being discussed, chose to make disparaging remarks about my accent. This is unfortunately not the first incident of this kind in this place. There was a well-documented incident a few weeks ago involving a Scottish Member of Parliament, Mr Speaker. Yes. Mr Speaker, this House is meant to be representative of all the nations, accents and backgrounds of the British state, and this kind of behaviour only serves to reinforce the privileged and exclusive perception of Westminster politics. Yeah. Mocking an accent is a very serious matter, as it ultimately undermines an individual's or a group of people's identity. I would like to seek your advice as to whether this behaviour that of a member mocking an accent of another member of this House is befitting of this place. And can I put on record, Mr Speaker, that I'm extremely proud to be Welsh and of my accent. So, just how much of that did you understand? Just how difficult was that accent? Perhaps not as difficult as the Scottish one from the other podcast. Now, at this point, you may want to listen to it again with the transcript, with the written version of this podcast in front of you. You'll find it on our website at adeptenglish.com, of course. This may help you, but understanding British accents is difficult, so I'll break down this task of understanding a bit more. Just before I do that, a word about our English speaking course, Course 1, Activate Your Listening. What I do on that course is very similar to what I'm doing in this podcast. I give you some spoken English, which may be difficult to understand, and then I make it easier for you to understand it. On Course 1 Activate Your Listening, the spoken English might be difficult because some of it's a conversation, but I go through it afterwards, sentence by sentence, and through the vocabulary to make it easy to understand. And then you can listen to the recording again, fully understanding what you're hearing. And this is how to speak English fluently, by understanding first. And this is very effective if you're learning English. Speaking of Course 1, if you haven't bought it yet, then go to adeptenglish.com and have a look at our courses page. So, if I read out the transcript of what Jonathan Edwards said, that may make it easier. Then I'll run through any vocabulary that you may not know. And then if you listen to the clip again, or maybe the whole podcast again, but certainly the clip, I think that you'll understand some more of what he's saying. Parts of it will fall into place. So this is what he says. This is me saying it. Diochen Vau, Mr Speaker, I'm extremely grateful to you for accepting this point of order. During the debate of the second reading of the Finance Bill yesterday, it was brought to my attention that a fellow member of this House, rather than engaging with the substance of the issue being discussed, chose to make disparaging remarks about my accent. This is unfortunately not the first incident of this kind in this place. There was a well-documented incident a few weeks ago involving a Scottish Member of Parliament, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, this House is meant to be representative of all the nations, accents and backgrounds of the British state. And this kind of behaviour only serves to reinforce the privileged and exclusive perception of Westminster politics. Mocking an accent is a very serious matter, as it ultimately undermines an individual's or a group of people's identity. I would like to seek your advice as to whether this behaviour, that of a member mocking the accent of another member of this House, is befitting of this place. And can I put on record, Mr Speaker, that I am extremely proud to be Welsh and of my accent. OK, so now I'll run through the vocabulary. So the first sentence, Diochen Vauer, that just means thank you very much in the Welsh language. Then he goes into English. I'm extremely grateful to you. Grateful is just another word for thankful. I'm extremely grateful to you for accepting this point of order. A point of order is when someone in Parliament draws attention to, 
highlights a breaking of the rules of the parliament. So someone has spoken in a way that they shouldn't have here. He goes on. During the debate of the second reading of the finance bill yesterday, so debate, D-E-B-A-T-E, is a discussion, usually where there are two sides, two opposing sides who disagree. But it works out what the issues are and perhaps arrives at a conclusion. The second reading of the finance bill, so a bill, B-I-L-L, in Parliament, is a proposal to change a law. It's how the change is presented so that Parliament can discuss it. And finance, F-I-N-A-N-C-E, here, being used like an adjective, means to do with money. A second reading just means that it's the second time that the MPs have discussed the bill. He says, it was brought to my attention. That means the same as someone told me. And a fellow member of this house means another MP. A fellow member of this house, rather than engaging with the substance of the issue being discussed, so he means this other MP, instead of focusing on the issue that they were talking about, chose instead to make disparaging remarks about my accent. So this other person instead made negative comments about Jonathan Edwards' accent. Disparaging remarks means negative, critical comments. He says, this is unfortunately not the first incident of this kind in this place. So he means something similar has happened before. It's happened previously. In this place is a term used by MPs, meaning in the House of Commons, in the part of Parliament, the lower house where they are. If they're talking about the upper house, the House of Lords, they don't call it that. They say instead, the other place. It's a tradition. He continues, there was a well-documented incident a few weeks ago. Well-documented means that the incident was written about and spoken about a lot. And this other incident involved a Scottish MP. When he says Mr Speaker, this is the title of John Burko, and the Speaker's job is to keep order in Parliament. Every MP addresses the Speaker as they talk. John Burko has actually just stepped down from his position this week and they've elected a new speaker. Jonathan Edwards then continues, This house is meant to be representative of all nations, accents and backgrounds of the British state. So he means that Parliament is meant to represent, to speak for all the nations, so that's England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, all the accents and all the backgrounds. Background tends to mean class, social class, the different types of people in the UK. He then says, and this kind of behaviour only serves to reinforce the privileged and exclusive perception of Westminster politics. So he means that people acting in this way, that's this kind of behaviour, reinforces the privileged and exclusive perception. So strengthens the image of Westminster politics as privileged. Here, privileged means the sense that only certain people are welcome in politics. It's exclusive and therefore it excludes people. That's what he's complaining about. So basically, he's objecting because he's saying mocking someone's accent makes them feel that they don't belong. They don't deserve to be an MP. And that would be wrong. He finishes, mocking an accent is a very serious matter as it ultimately undermines an individual's or a group of people's identity. So mocking an accent, the verb to mock, M-O-C-K, means to make fun of, to laugh at. So he's complaining that laughing at the way someone speaks is not okay. And he says it ultimately undermines an individual's or a group's identity. So it attempts to lessen the identity, the being of the person or people being mocked. Good point. Well said. I hate it when someone from the UK mocks my northern accent. So I think he makes a good point. Don't let anyone mock your accent. It's part of your identity and a good thing. He finishes by saying, I would like to seek your advice as to whether this behaviour of a member mocking the accent of another member of this house is befitting of this place. 
He's asking there, is it okay to do this here? And of course it's clear that Jonathan Edwards doesn't think it is, but he wants the Speaker of the House to say something about it. Then Jonathan Edwards ends by saying he is of course extremely proud to be Welsh and proud of his accent. Good on him. If you listen to the rest of the video, the Speaker says that Jonathan Edwards has a magnificent accent. Now, the important thing about this podcast is not so much the vocabulary, although we have covered some useful words about Parliament there. The purpose here is more to give you practice with the South Wales accent. With this accent, it's more the intonation, the different stresses on the syllables that you might find difficult. It's quite a tuneful, musical accent even, you might find. It goes up and it goes down in different places to my accent. So it will be good now for you to play this podcast again, possibly several times, and listen again to this Welsh MP speak English. Conversations of this kind can be hard to follow, but see if you can follow the meaning of what he's saying, because you've unpacked it with me, you've understood some of the vocabulary. It will mean that you've practised with a British accent, and then that if you meet someone from South Wales, you'll be more prepared. Let us know what you think of this podcast, whether it's helpful, and if you want us to do more of these with different accents. And if you go to the transcript, you can find the link to the video on YouTube as well and watch the whole thing. So if you're learning English, speaking is important, but remember to do lots and lots of English listening. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. That's the end of this podcast. Don't forget to visit our website for other podcasts. You can sign up for our free seven-day course. And if you're really serious about learning English, Course 1 is ready for you to buy and download. Adept English, helping you become fluent in English.